I hope things are going well with you. Hi, I'm Ron Carpenter, and I get to be your guide through the Word of God for the next few minutes. You see a logo behind me that says God's people. What is God's people? Well, that's what I'm trying to define. And sometimes we have a lot of man-made categories and a lot of man-made labels that just really don't add up to what God said we really are and who we really can be as a people. I want you to go on this journey with me. Let's discover what God really says about a people born out of one blood. Stay tuned. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. <coughs> See that you are not troubled. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay? Don't be troubled. Why? Because you're people of the word. You're people of covenant. And people who know the word and people who know their covenant do not need to be shaken by what's going on around them. So even though I'm troubled at what I see, there is a peace that does not leave me because Jesus said, don't be troubled. This stuff has got to happen. Sometime trouble has to happen to bring God's intended in. That's what he's saying right here. Next verse. For nation will rise against nation. Ethnicity will rise against ethnicity. The Greek word is ethnos, from which we get the word ethnicity or race. Race will rise against race, kingdom against kingdom. The kingdom word there is basilia, which tends to have to do with spiritual rulers and principalities. He said, so there's going to be spiritual conflict in the heaven and there's going to be racial conflict on the earth. And there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. We've had these for many, many years. These are the beginning of sorrow. Stay with me. He said, oh, I hate that end time preaching. Stay with me. I'm not preaching on the end times. I'm going somewhere else. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That's very interesting. You're going to be hated too. So listen, race is rising up against race. Oh, by the way, they're going to hate you too. So Jesus differentiates them and said, they're going to hate you and they're going to hate you because of me. I'm coming back to that. Next verse. And then many will be offended, will betray one another and hate one another. Then false prophets will rise up and deceive many, verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Because lawlessness abounds, the love of many will grow cold. Next verse. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Verse 14, and I'm going to stop. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. The trouble that we're seeing is producing a result that produces the end. This is not the end. The trouble that we see produces a result that produces the end. And I'm going to break that down for you in the next few minutes that I have right here. Are you ready to roll with me? Okay. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Throw that on the screen. Now, <coughs> kingdom against kingdom is different from race. <coughs> Now the spirit expressively expressively oh, excuse me expressively says that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with a hard iron these are not worldly people these are people that were once God's people who depart from it they depart from it because of deception okay what do they adhere to? Something they think is the doctrine of God, but deception, the, the nature of deception is you don't know that you're being deceived. It's one thing to believe a lie and know you believe a lie. It's another thing to believe a lie and you think it's the truth. So the Bible says that in the last days, the Spirit of God is saying that people are going to depart. Stay with me. What is biblically sound and accurate and truth, 
but they're going to get caught up in the times and they're going to believe things that God didn't say, but they're going to assume that it's godly. That's what deception is. Now, I believe that chaos and confusion in the earth is a direct result of things that are going on in the heavens. If some of you have not been taught a lot of this stuff, stay with me. I believe that Spirit of God will give you insight even though you may be a very young Christian. The Bible says <laughs> that the spirit world is the parent world. We tend to live by everything we can see. If we can see it, it's real. If we can't see it, it's not real. The fact is the Bible says that there is a world that is more real that you can't see than the one you can. The Bible says that everything that is made was made out of things that you can't see. The Bible says the things you can't see are never subject to change. The things you can see are always subject to change. So that's good news. If there's something that you like, that if there's something that you see that you don't like, it is subject to change. I tell my kids all the time when they bring me a problem, I say, it's not terminal. I say, this thing can change. <laughs> let's take the word of God that you can't see. Let's take the word of God, which is spirit, and let's turn it on this thing in the natural, which we don't like, because the word of God will never pass away. It is unchanging, but this situation is subject to change if we turn the word of God on it. Amen? So we've got to understand everything that we can see is temporary and subject to change. If things in the natural are shifting, they're being confused, and they're being rearranged, that tells me that there is a shaking going on in the heavens. I want to submit to you that everything that we see, although it may be painful, it is not necessarily bad news because sometimes there are principalities. The Bible says we're not fighting flesh and blood. So if we see the spirit of division in the races and we see the spirit of division in the world and we see families divided against families and color divided against color and one side of town divided against another side of town and rich divided against poor and we see Republicans divided against Democrats and I go on and on and on. When you see all this, this is the spirit of division. What do I mean by that? Well, we have places in the spirit and these are called principalities. These are demonic forces that rule in the spirit. These demonic forces have principles. A principality rules and governs and gets his power by principles. So what does he do? The Bible says that we are wrestling presumptions, mindsets, knowledge, imaginations. All those things happen in the realm of the mind. So your fight right now is in your head. Your fight is not with your brother. Your fight is in your head. Your fight is a spiritual battle. There is something trying to get as a thought process, a principle in the mind of your brother and in a opposing principle in your mind that causes the spirit of division to come because principalities govern through principles. These are doctrines of demons that we are believing because it's amazing to me when everything is going smooth, we're worshiping together and we're the kingdom of God. But let something come that begins to challenge and stress our unity and we run back to our earthly categorizations and we start going at each other with principles that come from doctrines of demons because I hear preachers saying things. I hear people calling each other out. I see friends being lost. I see people unfollowing one another. I see friends that won't associate with one another. Why? Not because of things written in the world, but because you are mad believing something that a demon whispered in your ear and you're now taking it out on your brother. Oh God, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm just throwing it out there and let the chips fall where they may. Hallelujah. Mm, so, they govern through principles. When those principles are accepted and embraced in our mind, they are called strongholds. A stronghold is not a demon out there. A stronghold is in the head. A stronghold is when you have believed a lie to be true. Case in point, nobody loves me. <laughs> there are literally people that walk around out of the filter that there's nobody that cares for them. John 3, 16, for God so loved. But before they can understand the love of God, I got to break through the stronghold that they believe because of what they've been through and because daddy left and because mama was never around and, and because these three people out and because they went through a divorce. So now they have come to the conclusion 
of what the demon put in their head. Nobody loves me. That's a lie. That's a stronghold. That is the thing that is used to blind people from the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. A stronghold is when you believe a lot of it. Well, the miracle always happens to somebody else. Well, I don't believe God can be healed. I mean, God can heal me. I don't believe I can be healed. I don't believe it. A stronghold is when you have accepted a lie to be true. It is a principle and a doctrine of a demon, and they are ruling you from the heavens, and they're called principalities. They govern through mindsets. False concepts and mental constructs are where they get their power. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. Somebody say, how much power does the devil have? The, power, the devil has the power to suggest something to you. Satan came into the garden and said to Adam and Eve, hath God not said? He just suggested. Hath God not said, if you eat, you'd be just like him? Well, that don't sound that bad to me. He just suggests. So the enemy works through the power of suggestion and waits for you to grab it. And then if you agree with the devil, then as a man thinketh, so is he. What you agreed with become the reality that you experience. He's fighting you in your mind. <laughs> So whatever my nature is, determines my desires. Whatever I desire, determines my action. God's People, a new series from Ron Carpenter addressing a biblical response to racism. You'll learn how in God's kingdom, we are all equal. Why has God asked us to do godly things? Because he knows what's in us and he knows what we can do. And it's time for Christ to be formed inside the body and us to grow on the inside with that which we've been born with us. Away from being a seed, 10, 20, 30 years, it's time to walk in the fullness of the expression of being spirit-filled men and women of God. Greater work shall we do because he went to the Father. This nine message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. I have seen during this racial tension, I've seen posts that had nothing to do with God and had no scriptural basis by people I have revered as longtime scholars. But even for a moment, of high emotion, we embrace the doctrines of demon and let the spirit of division run rampant. And the enemy sitting up there drinking a Coca-Cola saying, look at them, I got them fighting. I got, I got the people of God killing each other. Let me tell you something. I have never seen a demon fight another demon. I've never seen a devil fight another devil. I've never seen a witch fight another witch. I've never seen a warlock fight another warlock. You got to get that into church. I've only seen church people fight other church people. And you've got to understand when you want to lash out at your brother, you are not there representing your earthly category. You are an ambassador of Christ. You ascribe to another ethnicity, a higher order. You ascribe to another country, the citizenship in heaven. And you are an ambassador from heaven into the world of Christ. Christ is the anointing. So you have to step into every fight as an ambassador of the anointing. Not an ambassador of white, not an ambassador of black, and the list goes on. An ambassador of the anointing. I am here to say what the Spirit of God says, not to give you my two cents worth. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Whew, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of this ain't in my notes. I'm just getting it as I preach. Let me go on. I got a little bit more to go. I'm going to go right down these verses. Okay? He says, the powers of the heavens, excuse me. Go back up to verse 7, if you would, guys, and just stay with me. Just keep it on the screen. I'm going to go from verse to verse to verse. If I went back to Luke 21, Luke 21 talks about this is the same parallel scripture, but he adds more to it. He says, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. When I see confusion in the earth, I am taught that the earth represents what's going on in the heavens. That's why I've had when it said when it comes to warfare, you got to take the air before you can take the ground. So sometime before we try to go out and minister to a nation, we need to pray over the nation. We need to shake up the heavens with our prayer and with our praise and worship. So God says when you see things in the earth, it means what has been in power for years 
God is rearranging them. Why? Because the Bible says in Isaiah 9 that Jesus, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. So you've got to understand, sometimes the confusion that we see here does not mean God is losing. It means God has walked into a region or a territory, and the things that have been ruling for years are being torn down. Sometimes what you see in the natural is a desperate effort of demons to hold on to a territory that God is advancing and taking away from them. And I want to submit to you that the, that the unshakable kingdom that Hebrews talks about and the government that Isaiah talks about resting on Jesus is being established in areas where things that have been ruling for years have been in place. Maybe, just maybe, the heavens are being rearranged and we're about to see the earth being rearranged. I do not believe these are necessarily our worst days. I believe they can be our best. We just haven't seen what heaven has brought into the earth yet. Stay with me. Next verse, please place. And go back to Matthew 24, if you would please. Verse 7. Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Going to verse 8. These are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9. And they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. This is very interesting. Race <laughs> and ethnicity will be rising up against other races and ethnicities. He said, oh, and they're going to hate your people. Why did Jesus take the 12 and single them out and they're going to hate you too? Because you are a new race. They're going to hate your kind. They're going to hate you for my sake. They're going to hate you because you ascribe to my country and you live according to my government and, they, and that you refuse to get caught up in this lower order of things. You are a chosen generation. This is two weeks away, but I'm going to go ahead and put the cart before the horse. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Na a holy ethnos, a peculiar people that you might show forth the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into light. You are a people that God has made a whole nother ethnic group and we walk under the banner of Jesus and the kingdom of God is our government. Let me say that again. Jesus out of blood made a whole new race of people born of God. These people are a new nation in the earth and they subscribe to a higher order. They subscribe to the rule of the kingdom of heaven and they do not keep, get caught up in the lower entanglement of things. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Verse 10. And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. Why? Because people are going to try to pull you into the lower order of the argument and you're going to remain to the higher order. Let me tell you something. I am not a white Christian. I am a Christian and I happen to be white. You are a Christian first, and that is your order. It is your order above all things. And if you ever exalt your earthly ethnos above your hev heavenly ethnos, you are forfeiting your power. Last verse 14. Here's where I wanted to get to. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the world. Play something if you would, Terrence. <laughs> when you adhere to the higher order, your ethnicity, God's people, are going to be hated too. Okay? Said, and people are going to fall away and follow doctrines of demons. They're going to be in pulpits. They're going to be inspired speakers and get other people to be sucked by the undertow of the raw emotion too and not stay with that higher order. That's why the Bible says make every effort endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. I got to maintain my spiritual connection no matter what's going on in the earth realm. And I make every effort 
to keep the unity of our spirit brotherhood by the bonds of peace, by the bonds of right relationships. I do everything to keep my relationship right so that the Spirit of God may keep us connected. Ephesians 4, 1 and 2. Now he says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. He said, when lawlessness abounds, people have departed and brothers fighting brother and it seems like there's no solution. People's love grows cold and they're just like, you know what, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and they just step on my neck and snap it. They don't respect the fact that I'm reaching out so I'm just done. The love of many wax cold. Then the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. The bad stuff opens the door for the good stuff. There are people that don't want to hear the kingdom. Let me break this down. The gospel means good news. The kingdom means rule. He said, when it seems like there's lawlessness and no answer, then the good news of God's government will be preached to the whole earth. <laughs> there is a higher order that calls us out of all this racial bickering. It's the kingdom. And it will fall upon ears as good news when people have finally reached the conclusion there is no mental solution and no human ingenuity crafty enough to form a solution. We need the kingdom. Be preached to the whole world as a witness and then the end will come. Witness means evidence. Witness means proof. So Jesus didn't come just to save you. Jesus came for you to be an evidence producer. I'm speaking to the platform and the crowd that God has let me be responsible for. Does your life produce evidence of the kingdom? Or have you got sucked into the emotion of the season? Have you betrayed every kingdom thing you know because of hate, because of anger, because you're so mad, because you... It's not hard to produce the kingdom in peacetime. God needs kingdom witness producers in divided times. We know how to live. And I want to say to some of us, Everybody's hurt and disappointed in some way. But some of us, we just know better. We know better than the words we're saying and the anger we've got caught up in. We know better. And I humbly come today and submit myself to say God's calling us back to a higher order. Don't you succumb to arguments and principles that demons are putting in your head. This is not my highest order. What's in me is my highest order. And I must ascribe to his rule and his government and what he tells me to do. Love my enemy. Turn the other cheek. Shut my mouth. I've got to learn how to do those things. Forgive when nobody's doing it. So whatever my nature is determines my desires. Whatever I desire determines my action. God's People, a new series from Ron Carpenter addressing a biblical response to racism. You'll learn how in God's kingdom, we are all equal. Why has God asked us to do godly things? Because he knows what's in us and he knows what we can do. And it's time for Christ to be formed inside the body and us to grow on the inside with that which we've been born with us. Away from being a seed 10, 20, 30 years. It's time to walk in the fullness of the expression of being spirit-filled men and women of God. Greater works shall we do because he went to the Father. This nine message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.
just want you to know that I'm really, really grateful that you've tuned in with us. It's not like in this day and time with uh, cable and internet and satellite and let's just go on and on and on that you don't have options. The fact that in all of these options, there used to be three when I was growing up with rabbit ears, what we call rabbit ears on the TV. Now there's thousands upon thousands. The fact that you stopped and given your time here, we value that. Thank you. And I hope that the investment of the Word of God that is being made in your life will bring value to you and cause you to prosper and make your tomorrow better than your today. I want to stop and just talk to you a minute and say thank you for your gifts. We are viewer supported. Uh, I've been telling people lately, I felt like I had the need to because our audience has expanded somewhat. Noticed you didn't see any Coca-Cola commercials. Verizon didn't come on and nobody tried to sell you insurance. We didn't try to get you to go anywhere to eat or take a trip. There were no commercials. There were no advertisements. Why? It was just straight word of God. And that's because of people like you. And maybe you said, you know, I would never give to a TV minister. Maybe even at one time you were critical of it, but now you understand that it takes a lot of skill sets. It takes a lot of doing to get the word of God on TV and blast it to the whole world. And we are going to the whole world because people like you make it possible. Would you consider giving? For those of you who have given a week or 20 years to you, we say thank you. You are helping us and causing us to be able to do what we do. And you're giving into the greatest cause on the planet, expanding the kingdom of God and the love of Jesus Christ. But maybe you never have given, maybe you're considering it. Just listen to what God says. He'll tell you what to give. He'll tell you what to do and just obey that voice. And if you'd like to, if you give for the first time, whether it be this one time or becoming a monthly partner, it doesn't matter. For your first time gift, we're gonna give this gift back to you that you see on your screen to say thank you for everything that you would even consider doing for Ron Carpenter Ministries. We really highly value and value you, your viewership. We want to prove our trust. We've been doing this for a very long time and we want to continue honoring God with this mission for a very long time. I want you to go connect with me if you would on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. You get a whole lot more there because there we're talking every day. We got video clips, we got prayers, we got prophecies, we got words of encouragement, we got Bible verses, we got stories. We do a little bit of everything. Plus we promote and let you know the activities that we're involved in that you can be a part of. Go check me out. Until then, I'm just speak blessings over you. And I believe that the next time I see you is gonna be better than today. I'll see you real soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. And we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.